archery ranges in South Africa have been given the go ahead to open again, um, but they're under very strict conditions. And one of those conditions is that you have to be shooting with a face mask. Now, obviously that just shows that there's a, a huge lack of understanding of how archery works, um, but it is a nationwide um, requirement for all non-contact sports. So they couldn't make an exception for archery. So what that means is that we need to figure out the best way to actually practice with a face mask on the archery range without affecting your shooting negatively. Um, so what I did is I just grabbed a bunch of face masks, um, all the different types that I could find, and I shot with all of them. I shot with a typical side of the mouth anchor point and also the under, ch under the chin anchor point for freestyle recurve. And so I wanted to just sort of take you through the pros and cons of the different masks and kind of what we're looking for um, and what to consider when you're choosing a face mask to shoot with. So before I actually show the different face masks, um, I just want to kind of run through the basic principles of good anchor point position um, for both anchor points so that you can understand then like the different aspects of the face masks, what's going to make more sense um, and what isn't going to work so well. So first things first is that if you're shooting um, traditional or bow hunter or bare bow, you're going to be wanting to use the corner of the mouth side of the face anchor point. So to just show you what that looks like, basically we're looking for tip of the index finger on the corner of the mouth and then the back of the index finger sort of this sort of um, joint over here sits on the cheekbone the thumb will often sit sort of just behind the jawline but there's a lot of bone on bone contact between the hand and the face so i'll show you again what that looks like that's what we want okay so that one's actually a lot easier to do with a mask um going under the chin is a little bit trickier so the freestyle recurve, otherwise known Olympic recurve, this is when you'd be shooting with a sight, you need to be actually anchoring right in underneath the chin with the string sitting on the center of the nose. You'll sometimes feel the string on your lips and then onto the actual jaw, either from the center to the side, but you're having bone to string contact over there. And then the hand is actually then going finger underneath the chin and the hand sitting along the jawline, the thumb sort of touching against the neck. So you need a lot more feeling on the jawline than when you're anchoring up here on the corner of the mouth. So let me show you that again. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So obviously the first thing is, is that if you have a very thick mask, you're not gonna be able to actually feel your facial features and it's gonna be very difficult to know that your hand and your fingers and the string are sitting in the same place every single time. So immediately what I found is that the masks that are thinner, that give you a little bit more feel on the face are immediately better. The next thing that was very important is that the actual, um, how tight it fit my face made a big difference. If it was too loose, when you release it catches the mask and moves it out the way. So the first one that I used was just a good old surgical mask. Um, you can get these at pretty much any pharmacy at the moment. Dyskem sells them in packs of 10, which is great. Um, I find these actually just to be the most comfortable and actually use these pretty much for all my daily activities. Um, obviously what you find is that nice and light fabric, so nice and easy to um, kind of be outdoors with and kind of moving around. I find that I can breathe quite easily with these. Um, it doesn't, doesn't feel too stifled. And because the fabric is relatively thin, there's a lot of feel through the mask. Um, it is a little bit tricky, but you can get the string and you can feel it on the tip of the nose when you're anchoring with the, um, with the string. But basically what I did was I shot a few shots corner of the mouth, I shot a few shots underneath the chin, and this is actually a really, really good option for shooting, and it's one that I highly recommend. Okay, so the other mask that I used, or the second mask that I used, was um, a sort of nice stretch fabric mask, a little bit of stretch. Um, this mask was not too bad for the corner of the mouth anchor point, as you can see, but as soon as I had to go underneath the chin, I found that this mask wasn't fitting tight enough on my face. And when you release, it catches the mask and that's obviously going to affect your shot. It then means that you feel like you need to readjust the mask from shot to shot. And that's obviously not going to be an ideal solution. I think that the stretch thin fabric is not a bad idea um, as long as it can actually fit on your face nice and tight and you can secure it so that you're not going to have the any excess um, sort of material bulging so that the string doesn't actually catch onto the mask. All right, then the next one that I did was a slightly stiffer material. There's no stretch whatsoever in this. It's a nice light fabric. 
um, but it is quite um, heavily molded so it doesn't fit very tight on your face so it doesn't give you a sense of your facial features so i found that this one was definitely not ideal and when i released the string it caught the mask and it pulled it off my face or pulled it to the side of my face and i felt after every shot i needed to to move it back into position so not terrible and you could shoot with it but definitely not not the first choice all right then um i moved on to shooting with a buff now I had suspected that this was going to be the best option um, before I actually even tried it and that was just simply confirmed with shooting so what I did was I tested it first doubled over so double thickness and um, the only thing with this is that I find it a little bit tricky to keep it up and keep it up on my face but if you pull it up sort of higher on the back of your head I find that then it stays without you having to adjust it from shot to shot um, this was absolutely the best option it felt the most comfortable um, it also had the dual effect of like actually protecting the back of your neck from the sun while you're outdoors and shooting so as long as you get a nice light fabric buff um, nothing too thick and heavy it'll actually be really really nice obviously on the cold days a nice thick heavy one would actually help keep you nice and warm so sort of dual benefit there but definitely found that this because of the sort of tight fit on your face you can really actually even see a person's nose and facial features when they have just a buff on um, that obviously immediately gives us a lot more feel between the hand the string and the face and making sure that your anchor point positions and marks and checks are all where they need to be from shot to shot i then also tried it just single um single thickness so just one without having it actually doubled over and i found that that was even more comfortable but not as much of a difference as i thought i thought it might be a little bit too thick doubled over and having it single thickness would feel vastly better but i actually found that double thickness was okay the reason why i did that and wanted to check the difference between a single single thickness and double thickness is because often a buff is actually too thin to to stop your vapor and breath coming through the buff so if you're really wanting to be very careful about making sure that you aren't spreading germs you actually would need to make sure that you double up the buff on your face so yeah so those are basically um, the masks that I have there are different types of masks and obviously this is going to be different for everybody everybody's going to have different facial features and they're going to find to have different things more comfortable um, just the basic principles are that you want something that is tight fitting something that is relatively thin ideally something with a little bit of stretch so it actually molds to your facial features so that you can feel them when you're anchoring on your face and um, obviously something that you can feel comfortable to wear for a prolonged period of time you're going to be outdoors it's potentially hot you are going to be obviously not it's not cardiovascular exercise but you are going to be using your body so something that you can breathe nice and easily with is obviously going to be much better the other thing you do need to be aware of is, is that you need to make sure that your mask isn't going to be obstructing your vision at all so making sure that it is something that stays nice and low it must of course be over your nose for it to be effective but anything higher than that is going to start affecting your your vision and your ability to aim and do your string alignments and so on so I hope that helps obviously what we're going to be doing is once we can get the range going we'll get some feedback from guys and we'll just see what the sort of general consensus is regarding um, shooting with a mask